through 14, right? It's a commandment, not a suggestion or a recommendation, a commandment that we love one another. And to be a friend of Jesus, we obey his commands. So we have to be working on that, y'all. That's, that's a, hard, a hard thing to do, to love, to love everybody, but he calls us to do that. All right, so we'll finish this next week, and then we'll have a new one for the month of December. All right, I invite our children to come forward now for our children's moment. Good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, good morning. Good to see everybody. Good morning. You just sit wherever. You want to sit over here? All right, so one of our very first memory verses was 1 Thessalonians 5. I want to say 16 through 18 was the reference, right? But it said, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And this is a week we refocus on thanksgiving. We think about giving thanks, and we will do that by sitting around and eating a very big meal of food with our family, right? But how should we be thankful? How do we celebrate and give thanks? And it says in all circumstances. So that means when things are going well and when things are not going well. It means when you've gotten a bad report or a grade at school and things are not going well. Or when things are great and it's your birthday and you're having a party and it's an awesome day. So how do we give thanks in all circumstances? What do you guys think? Should we say, thank you, I got a bad grade on my test. Amen. Think that's what it means? No, I don't think that's quite what it means. I think it's, it's, talk, it's teaching us to find a way to be content and happy, even when things are hard and difficult. To give thanks to God because he's still with us even when things are not going so well. When our friend has been mean to us, when our brother or our sister has pinched us or smacked us, because I know that probably, maybe, maybe it's just me and my brother, but sometimes we would smack each other. And not with a sweet kiss on the side of the cheek. Sometimes we would smack one another, right? So, you know, you don't give thanks for that, right? That you're fighting with your brother or your sister or that things are not going well. But that verse says that we should pray all the time, that we should rejoice all the time, and that regardless of what's going on around us, we can give thanks because there's so much always to be thankful for. And even when it's hard, God is working in our lives in the hard stuff. So you'll learn more about that as you get older and as you grow up. But for the meantime, just tuck it away in the back of your brain and remember that we're to be thankful always, not just in November, right, but in all circumstances. All right, let's fold our hands and repeat after me, dear Jesus, dear Jesus thank, you for us. thank you for loving us. Help us to be thankful people, be thankful people. All, the time, all the time, in all circumstances, in all, circumstances. In all, places. In all places. Help us Help to trust you, trust you with this action. With this action. Amen. 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 All right, you guys walk out to the back. <laughs> Good morning again. Uh, would the ushers please come forward, please? Right. Let's pray. Dear God, we humbly bring our gifts to you this day. Your son redefined the, for the world his teachings and the interacting with people. Jesus also redefined what it means to give in a way that pleases God. May we live and give during this season that reflects the one who loves, who's, who lives within us. In your name we pray. Amen.
to our time to share in our joys and concerns. What things do you have that we can lift up together this morning? Yeah, Kristen. Yes, yes. Let's give God some praise. Amen. You're like, we don't know what we're praising for. Um, Steve Skaken came home from uh, the rehab facility on Friday, so we praise God for his recovery and continued recovery. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, amen, amen. So we, we give thanks for God's movement there, amen. Great to see um, all of his family, see you guys here with us this morning, yeah. Um, continue to keep uh, the families of Tara Powell. Uh, her father's funeral was on Friday, and uh, keep, keep them in your thoughts and your prayers. And then our funeral for Clyde Gaddy will be this coming Saturday. It'll all be here at the church. Visitation at 2, with the service at 3. And we'll send an email out with that information this week, so you'll have that. Um, but let's be in prayers for uh, Clyde's family as well. Carrie? Big love to family friends. This week, Tim Wilson, who was an admirable, all right, so let's be in prayers with these two families for Tim Wilson and Dottie Brumelow as they've passed. Um, prayers also for the, there are some students, uh, I think in Union Grove school system, a seventh grader that was killed in a car accident, a third grader that was in the accident and is at the hospital. Um, prayers for that family and, and students. Sorry, thank you, Hickory Flats. Okay, say the last name. Okay. Oh, oh, sure. Say the last name again. Johnson. Johnson. Okay. Hmm. Great, great. Glad you're doing so well, Nancy. Um, had, had skin cancer surgery is what Kim shared. While, while Kim is looking as well, um, prayers for Jan Honkinen and uh, recovery and, and good health. Good to see Dave pass our love to Jan. Other things this morning? Mm -hmm, Nancy? Okay. Um, prayers for Burma Campbell that was in a car accident and is uh, hospitalized at Grady. Mercy. Did you, Kim, did you find what you're looking for? Okay. But prayers for them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Other things this morning? Uh, Linda, yeah. So he sprained his leg? Oh, wow. A, a gun accident. Okay. Um, so prayers for, for Eli. Um, mercy. As he recovers from that. Um, glad he's... Uh, it could have been worse. Could have been worse. Mercy. 
Okay. This is uh, Linda's grandson, prayers for Eli. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. She's having her gallbladder removed. Oh, yikes. Pretty young. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's going to happen. So wow. Sure. Okay. Okay. Prayers for Shelby Brooks having her gallbladder removed uh, this week. Mercy. Okay. And then uh, we, we uh, continue prayers for Tommy and, and good to hear, uh, hear a word from him. So to send back our love, our love to him. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Oh, yeah. Thanks. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, as Thanksgiving approaches, I just pray that we are able to celebrate and um, hold our mouths shut. <laughs> That's right. That's Thanksgiving right. Is, um, uh, we are going to have a new dog in the family. Yay. Uh, Heather got accepted to University of Georgia, so we are thrilled. And Different kind of dog. All right. Kind of I was like, they got a puppy. A bulldog. All right. So congratulations to Heather getting accepted into UGA. Woohoo! That's awesome. That's awesome. And then uh, just prayers, prayers for our time with our family. We mentioned this in our first service. Uh, um, it's, it's a great time to come together with our families, but sometimes that's very hard as well. As you know, I don't have to explain that. You know <laughs> that sometimes it's hard to be with our families who we love and care about. So she said that we would be able to keep our mouths shut. Uh, during Thanksgiving, just keep putting turkey in there, and it'll be all right. You know, just like I'm just gonna have another bite of pie here. Um, so may God give us strength. Prayers also for people traveling uh, for Thanksgiving. You may have family coming in, or you may be going out. Uh, so prayers for all those folks. Um, Tim and I are, are glad to have my mother-in-law come in on Tuesday. She'll be flying in, so prayers for for her as she travels. But um, prayers for this this week, and prayers for our turkey smoke fundraiser, and that that would all, all go well too. Um, Nancy. Okay. But she uh, has been di diagnosed with breast cancer. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Prayers for Nancy's friend, Judy, who's been diagnosed with breast cancer. And the second one, if you would um, pray for Shannon Wheeler. She is still having an extremely hard time in the death of Alyssa, her daughter, my granddaughter, from March of this year. Uh, she did pass away from um, right. epilepsy. But right. 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 Okay. Continued prayers for the Wheelers, uh, specifically Shannon, as they um, sort through the grief of uh, losing their granddaughter back in March. Um, so prayers for them, that family. Uh, and, and others that are also dealing with um, the first Thanksgiving without a loved one, and um, that, that's always a hard time. Okay. Anything else? All right, well, those that are, um, that are there at home with us know that you can uh, put prayer concerns in the comments, and uh, we are praying for those folks as well and lift them up uh, as well uh, through, our, through our prayers with one another. Uh, we'll have a time of silent prayer while Ms. Esther uh, guides us with a, a, a focus for meditation, and then I'll lead us in our prayer time, and we'll conclude with the Lord's Prayer, which will be on the screen here behind me. Let's go to the Lord together.
God, we thank you how, uh, for your presence with us. We thank you for um, how you, you walk with us through everything. And we're not alone and left to try to do things on our own, but that you offer yourself to us as our support, as our rock, our strong tower, our source of deliverance. And through you, we have victory overcoming the hardships, the struggles, the pains that we have in life. We have victory in Jesus. Lord, sometimes we're overwhelmed with our circumstances. It's hard to see past uh, what's right in front of us and um, problems we don't know how to solve, situations we're not sure how we got into, um, and we, we look to you for help. Come to our rescue. Come to our aid. For you are our good shepherd. And you watch over us. You're not like the hired hand that runs and flees at the first sign of trouble, but you are there. Your rod and your staff, they comfort us. You fight back the enemy and you protect us and keep us in the right path. So Lord, all these things that we've cried out with this morning, we ask for your mercy. We ask you to to take notice of these concerns which you already have, (laughs) but we put them before you anyway because we know you long for us to be in that kind of a relationship with you, to bring to you our our burdens, to bring to you our sorrows, to bring to you our joys and our, our celebrations, that we're in a relationship with you and that there's this communication and um, that you, you, you see us and you move in our lives. So God, there's many that need healing Christ, we cry out on their behalf. Have mercy. There are many who are mourning loved ones. We cry out on their behalf. Christ, have mercy. Lord, there are some in in just difficult, difficult situations. Christ, have mercy. And as we come to you, as we turn to you, that you would exchange our grief, our sorrow, our struggle with your perfect peace. That in the midst of whatever's going on in our lives, we would have peace because you are there. Because you are moving. Because you are working on our behalf. Oh, how awesome you are. How great is your name. Lord, guide us as your church and as your people. As we go through the the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs of our days and our weeks, help us to reflect you that we would um, show loving kindness to one another, even when the person we're facing may be rude or cruel or mean. Help us to continue to reflect self-control and kindness, generosity, even when people don't recognize our efforts, don't show appreciation towards us. Help us in all our ways, God, to reflect you back to the world. That people would not see us, but see you. Holy Spirit, work in us and transform us, change us. We cannot do this on our own. How wonderful it is you've given us yourself to have the power to do so. So Lord, may this place, may this church, may this people, may we be ones who are constantly... um, from, from how we've chosen to live, may our ways be honoring you, glorifying you. And Lord, as we go into this week, specifically with thanksgiving in our hearts, help us to um, be appreciative of all you've done for us. And Lord, we pray now the prayer that you have taught us to pray when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.
a reaction with Shelby someone had mentioned that she was probably out for the break and I said oh she okay and they said I don't know
This morning comes from the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. Paul's letter to the people in Rome. He says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer yourselves, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, 
but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has just distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then encouragement, give encouragement. And if it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word that you've given to us, that we could know who you are and who we are as your people. Help us with it. Uh, It's challenging. It's sometimes hard to understand, hard to kind of gather what was meant for them and how that applies to us today and all of the things in between. So help us, Lord, to know your word and to be able to follow it in faithfulness. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. All right, so this morning I, I'm going to need a couple of volunteers from the congregation. I need uh, two volunteers, and I'll tell you what you're going to volunteer for. I need adults, uh, and I want you to tell us, if you can remember, what you wanted to be when you were a child. Like, what did you want to be when you grew up, when you were younger? And then what was your career, what was your career path, or what did you do with yourself, whether you kept the home and raised a family, or you had a job in various places, um, and be able to share those two questions with us. So I've got one hand, I need one more. Two, one and two. All right, we're going to go to the back and then come out at the front. Yep, they got to be able to hear you, and the people at, people at home, people at home, though. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to be a mom and a teacher, 100%. Those are the only two things I ever wanted to be, so I have the opportunity to and then both. you have now i'm both a teacher a, both a mom and a teacher and a mom yeah nice great great all right Let you guys kind of pass that on down to Kristen. uh in kindergarten i wanted to drive the school bus that was my first goal nice school bus driver yeah and then around second grade i decided i wanted to change to be a pilot and here i am that's right that's right and on the path they went let me let me get one more person Maybe you didn't pursue the thing you thought you would as a child. Amanda? Well, she didn't. She, she, she said school bus driver, so she didn't exactly pursue that. Yeah. So I wanted to be a pharmacist. Uh-huh. Because uh, I thought it was really cool that um, when you were not well, that you magically got this, this <laughs> you know, magical stuff from the pharmacist, and then you were well again. So right. I wanted to do that and make everybody well. Right. Um, I learned early on when... I was in college that I did not want to take uh, the languages, um, Latin, right. that it took to be a pharmacist. So right. I went another pathway, stayed yeah. home with my kid, and yeah. then I became a teacher. Never thought I'd become a teacher. I told everybody, no, how can you be a teacher? Oh, that, oh mm-hmm. I can't deal with children. And my path led me that way. So right. I had to follow, follow right. my path. That's right. Follow where you're going. Thanks. Thanks. Let's give these ladies a hand. So sometimes the things you want to do as a child um, do become the things you do as an adult, and it's kind of a straight path there. Uh, my, my niece, uh, from a young, I mean, six, seven, eight, young age, felt like she wanted to be a teacher. She had a teacher that um, really um, uh, was a gift to her, and, and she had a good, it was a good experience with that, with that teacher, so much so that she was like, I want to do this when I get older. And, and so she has, and she's just 22, but she's gone all the way through college, gotten her master's, and now is working in a school down in the Macon area. Um, and then there's others of us that maybe meander a bit and sometimes find ourselves in a career that we, had, you know, you're like, how did, I, how did I get into doing this? It's kind of a, a weird happenstance and turning of events, how you got to where you were. Uh, when I was little, the first thing I can remember wanting to be was an astronaut. And maybe there was something before then, but that's the first one that came to mind for me. I would, wanted to go to outer space, and you have to be wicked smart to be an astronaut and have, per, you used to, maybe still, perfect vision. I do not have perfect vision. Um, and so that, that dream uh, was cast aside. Uh, then I, I wanted to be a writer at some point, and um, I, I wrote uh, little short stories for myself and shared with some friends when I was about a teenager. And I look back and I read those things, and I go, oh, bless your heart. That was... Because <laughs> to me, they had such depth and, and volume, and, and, and no, not so much. Uh, but it was still fun, and I still enjoyed that. Uh, then I, I wanted to be a veterinarian at a point. 
I love animals, and then I wanted to be an archaeologist, and I wanted to be a biologist, all these different things. I just thought I was heavily influenced by film and TV uh, in these things that I thought I would pursue. But when it came down to it, when I got to now I'm done with high school and it's time to pursue something to earn a living from, I, I, I didn't know. I didn't really know. Um, I, I, again, I, pretty close in high, like the end of high school, I was still thinking veterinarian, and then that kind of got a different turn from that. So I really, I started college. I knew that was my next step for sure. It's not everybody's next step after high school, but I knew that was for me. And I just hoped, I figured I would figure it out along the way, which did happen. Um, and, uh, but it was like I was at that last moment of, you, you, you're, you're almost a junior. We got to got to figure this out, uh, before this call to ministry came about to me. That, that's how I came at this, uh, and, and how God spoke to me was as I was trying to figure out a career path, I recognized that God was leading me to something, leading me to um, be a pastor, which initially I didn't realize that at all. Uh, I just knew God was calling me to full-time ministry. I didn't know pastor. I probably would have run far away if I had known pastor right off the bat. Um, but I knew that God was calling me to something. I, I, as I pursued college, I knew I wanted to honor God with my life, and I wanted that to also be reflected in whatever career path I had. Now, we need to be careful here because God has a calling for all of us. All of us are called. God has a plan for your life. He has a plan for you. And it doesn't always look the same, right? We, we sometimes think that if you received a calling, a from God message of this is my path and plan for life, that it must reflect itself in something like this. As a pastor, in a ministry position in a church, serving as a missionary, doing something that, that required kind of Christian education of some sort for you to then be in that position. But God calls us to all sorts of things. A teacher, a pilot... Uh, a mom, a bus driver, uh, a mechanic, uh, an FBI agent, police officer, fireman, all kinds of different things that can also be your calling. So there's kind of two things I would say that there's sometimes your career is the call itself, is the thing that God has taken you to, whatever that looks like, whether it's specifically some kind of ministry thing or it's a, a maybe more secularly viewed job that is your mission field. And sometimes you, gotta, you do a job because you have to pay the bills and you need to meet the needs of your family, and then that calling is ha fills itself out in other ways, right? That this is your job, and, and you may do what God's led you to do in other capacities. But it's important for us to know that every one of us has a call on our lives, and God has a plan and a purpose for everybody, not just some people, not just clergy or, or missionaries or people like that, but all of us, God has a plan for you. Now, our scripture this morning in Romans, Paul is trying to, to communicate this to the people in Rome, that, there's, that it takes all kinds. It takes all kinds of people. And all of us have been given different gifts, different talents, different abilities to, do, to be about the, the purposes of God, to be about the mission, the mission plan that God has for us. Right, so he says, you know, if you if you're gifted in prophecy, then you should prophesy in proportion to your faith. If you're someone who loves to serve, then you should serve. If you're a teacher, you should teach. If you're an encourager, you should encourage. Whatever your whatever your gifts and abilities are, you should use those to your fullest ability for for God. So it, it takes all kinds of people. We we need folks who who do all sorts of things. Everybody cannot and should not be a pastor because we need people to be sharing the light of God as plumbers, sharing the light of God as athletes, sharing the light of God in the entertainment industry and in music and through art and through uh, all you know just a myriad of careers and paths and jobs. I think you understand that, but. The whole point of these messages I've been sharing is that sometimes we forget. Sometimes we forget these things we have been taught or, or we used to know um, about what it means to be a Christian, that God sees us, that he knows us, that we're not alone in the midst of our circumstances, but God is with us and aware of where we are and what's happening with us, that God has chosen us to be his people, that we have value and worth, and that, um, that, you, that you're worthy 
You're worthy and loved by God. You know, say, no, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not enough, I'm not this, I'm not that. No, God has chosen you. That God loves us. He loves us in spite of our failures and our shortcomings, that God would love us, cares for us, longs to be in relationship with us has made a way for us to be redeemed in the midst of our brokenness. He loves us. And we hear the lies of the world and the lies that we tell ourselves that say you're not worthy, you don't have value, you don't have meaning. And that's not what God's word says. And this is this next piece of that, to know that God has a plan for us. Now you flip over and to go back to the Psalms, and I mean it's all throughout Scripture. If you read the book, you'll learn all this in the book. Fancy that. We have this thing to learn and to know and understand who God is, but we need to read it. Psalm 139 has kind of been this recurring verse, this recurring chapter for us in these last several weeks. And in the midst of that, in Psalm 139, verse 16, the psalmist writes, All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. That while we were being formed in our mother's bodies, that God saw us and had a plan for our lives. Marissa Parker was in worship this morning. Marissa is due with her little baby girl in three weeks. And, uh, and I took note of that today, that there is a life inside of her that God has a plan for. He's already got it mapped out, what he wants that child to become. And that little girl will grow and have ideas and thoughts and will pursue, pursue different dreams and goals. And God has a plan for her. God has a plan for you. And sometimes we get off track on that plan. We're not really paying attention or listening, and we try to do things our own way. But God has a plan for us, and if we'll listen, he will tell us what he wants us to do. That's the next verse I had that came to mind for me is Jeremiah 29. This is one that we um, often reflect on with our confirmands, our young people in confirmation classes, and and. In, kind of invite them to memorize that passage. And in this passage, uh, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. God has plans for us. Then you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart and I will be found by you. This is a great passage, not just because that message is important to know that God has a plan for us, but this message came to the people of Israel as they were going into exile, not a happy place to be, going, leaving the promised land, going into exile, being captured by their enemies. And this, this reminder comes to them, don't forget, I have a plan for you. This is not the end of your story. I have a plan. And I'm going to bring you back to the place that I have for you, bring you back to this promised land. And when you seek me, I will be found by you. That's such good news for us. Hey, we think God is hiding himself, concealing himself so that we would walk around in, in confusion and, and lack of information and just not know what, what's going on. But no, God, God is there if we will seek him. Have you ever played uh, hide-and-go-seek with a small child before? Anybody ever played hide-and-go-seek with a small child? Probably most of the room, right? A four-year-old, a five-year-old, you know, one of the, when they're just learning the details, right? And you don't hide yourself like this. Where you cannot be seen, you usually do like this, right? So you're kind of exposed so they can find you because the point is to have fun together, right? And they're like, oh, I see you, I see you. And I think that's the way God is with us. He's not removed that we cannot find him. But if we seek him and we reach out to him, he shows himself to us. Now, in my calling story, as God was showing me what he had for me, I, I was not, was not listening very well. God kept using people in my life to speak to me, my brother, who I, I greatly respect and love and adore, to say, you know, I, I can see this, this, this some growth in life and Christ is happening in you. Maybe God's calling you to be, because I was like, I don't know what I'm, 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 I'm not sure what I'm, I'm trying to to figure out a career, and maybe you should think about going to seminary. What? No, kind of like Amanda. What? No, no, no. I'm not going to become a preacher. That's what pre preachers go to seminary. I'm not going to become a pastor. Here we are. Uh, six months later, three months later, my campus minister at school was like, I think maybe God's calling you to ministry. I want to bring you some seminary catalogs. I didn't want to have anything to do with that. Here is this uh, Baptist campus ministry, and he could see God working in this young woman. 
I don't think he knew pastor at that point either, but saw what God was doing and encouraged and supported. Then I was in a mission trip in the summertime. So this is like from like January to the summer. And while on that mission trip, the people that were part of, that were leaders on my team and people in the communities where we were serving that were the leaders began to speak into my life as well. Just kept coming up, kept coming up, kept coming up. Till finally I was like, huh, maybe God's calling me to ministry. <laughs> I could see God going, yes, yes, okay, yes. So I sat and I prayed and I said, oh God, make your will so clear to me that I can't help but see it and follow in it. I really wanted the neon sign or the sky riding, something that would be blatantly obvious. It really was already obvious. And then I was at a Methodist camp meeting, like the day after that prayer, that's where I was. And the evangelist, Rod Barnett, he's coming back to Mount Zion this summer, and he preached a message called Letting God Surprise You with the Will He Has for Your Life, or something something to that effect. Have we let God surprise us with his will and his plan for us? And I sat there like this, arms folded, going, hmm, feeling like I had been set up. <laughs> and he talked about kind of these two things like we've been discussing this morning, that God may be calling you to see where you currently already work, what you're already doing, to recognize that as your mission field. That is the place where you are to serve, where you're to minister to those around you and be salt and light in that environment. Or God may be calling you to leave that job and go pursue some other kind of ministry, some other kind of thing that's specialized that he wants you to do. And so I sat and I listened. And then he got to this point in the message and he said, how far are you going to make God go to show you the plan he has for your life? And I just, that kind of hit me all over. And so at the altar call that night, I went down to the altar, and I surrendered to that, this sense of, I don't know what this means exactly, but I'm going to, I feel God calling me to ministry, and I I need to yield to that. And peace, peace just washed over me. I had not had any peace. I'd been wrestling and wrestling and wrestling, and then I had peace. God has a plan for us, and if we will seek him, and we will ask him, he will show us. I bet there are people in your life who know what your gifts and graces are, who know where you're best suited and what you're talented with and what your abilities are, and probably could even say, I think God's leading you to this because I see these things evidenced in your life. God has a plan for you, dear ones. He has a calling on your life. And it's not too late to respond to that. Wherever you are in in this life that we live, it's not too late. You flip over into the Gospels, and we see God calling people from their careers to do new things, calling the disciples who were fishermen and a tax collector and all these different walks of life and bringing them all together with their different abilities and talents to be his followers and ultimately be the ones who would go and spread the message. These were not trained seminarians, right? These were, you might call them common folk, just as much as a seminarian is a common folk too, right? But... They weren't people you would think to be in that position, but yet they were specifically, strategically perfect for that role. And Jesus tells them, I don't want you to fish for fish anymore. I want you to fish for people. And they walked with him, and he showed them, and he taught them, and he led them. And then you flip over to Ephesians. And Ephesians chapter 2 says that as we are following in God's grace, recognizing that we can't earn salvation, but it's this gift that God gives us. Paul says that God has created in Christ Jesus for us to do good works, that God has prepared in advance for us to do. God has a plan for your life. And he calls us to to join up together to be about this work of Jesus Christ. Everybody doesn't need to be a pastor. Everybody doesn't need to be an NFL player. Everybody doesn't need to be a plumber or an architect or whatever, an astronaut, a veterinarian, right? But God has a plan for all of us, and if we do what God is leading us to do, then it all comes together in this beautiful concert to to complete the plans that God has. But when we are stubborn and we are resistant and we are foolish, then the plan doesn't prevail and, and push along, right? can't all be a nose where would our sense of hearing be we can't all be eyes how would we move without feet 
can all be hands, where would our heartbeat be? But we need all of these differences about ourselves to pursue God's plans. All right, so let's talk about a couple things that people think that callings are that they are not. Some people feel like a calling is only for someone in a specific sort of ministry-related sort of position. That's not true, as we've already discussed, right? God can call you to be a preschool teacher. God can call you to be a a plumber. God can call you to uh, be a, a soccer coach. There's, there's all kinds of paths. It doesn't necessarily look like a ministry thing, though it can, and you need to be paying attention to that too. Calling can look like all kinds of things. Uh, there's a thought that some calls are maybe better than others, right? Like, oh, this thing that I, I, just, I just do this little thing. My mom uh, sends cards to people all the time. Someone's sick, she sends them a card. Someone's uh, have a celebration, she sends them a card. And she does this all the time. And that is a ministry that, that God has given her. And you might say, well, that's not as important as, as someone who's working with the homeless or someone who is, who is preparing and making, writing Bible literature, teaching literature. Absolutely it is. She's doing what God has gifted her and enabled her to do. She's being an encourager, right? Paul says if your gift is encouragement, then you should encourage. Right, so there's this thought, this hierarchy of, of what call, you know, well, this is not really a call. I, all I do is I help, I help people with their cards on the weekend, some friends of mine, you know, that I know they're having a hard time financially, and I do, I just, I take care of the, they just provide the parts, and it's not a big deal. That's a ministry. Absolutely, that's important, and that makes a difference. There's not a hierarchy to what call is better than others. All of us are on the same place, called by God. Well, I don't have the right skills. There's this, this misnomer that you have to have, have to have the right kind of training. I, I can't teach Sunday school class. I'm, I don't have enough Bible knowledge to do that. Guess what? There's books for that kind of thing. <laughs> There's materials provided. There's, you can learn and you can grow. Everyone who is doing anything, anything, had to have a first time at it. You know, I've, this is my 19th year as a pastor, and 16 of those years, I've been serving the church as the lead pastor. So the point of saying that is that I preached weekly, whereas in those first three years of ministry, I was an associate, and I didn't get to preach every week. So just based on those 16 years, I take vacation days, so sometimes I'm not here on a Sunday. So let's, let's say I preach 47 out of 52 weeks a year over 16 years. That's over 600 sermons that I've given in that amount of time. Lord, have mercy. God bless all of you. <laughs> right, but there was a time when Michelle had never preached a sermon before. And she had to, figure, had to figure it out. And people coached me and taught me and helped me get there. And I read books and I studied and we practiced and, and we were corrected. And uh, God bless, El- Ellsworth Callis was my preaching professor in seminary. And his correction was so kind and gentle that you it felt like a compliment and you were like wow and then you were like oh wait I think that was that was a little bit of correction but it was so gentle and so kind uh you know everybody who Miss Esther there was a day when Miss Esther didn't know which keys were what on the piano but she knows where they're at now doesn't she yes so if you're like I don't have the right skills for that That shouldn't hold you back from completing the call. You go all throughout the Bible, and people had no ability or skill, and God raises them up to be leaders. In fact, it seems to be that God loves those kind of people the most. He loves the underdog. He loves the one who says, I can't do that, and he empowers them to be able to do it. Paul says, when I'm weak, then I am strong. So if you don't have that ability, I applaud you, because God is going to empower you to be able to do it. Don't let that be something that holds you back from completing what God is calling you to do. Everybody's got a first time. You might also think, this is the last one here, you might also think that you're either too old or too young. I'm too old to be used by God. I'm too young to be used by God. That I have to, you have to hit some kind of sweet spot in the middle of life. I believe God wants to use us for all of our days. That even as a young child or an, a long-in-year life person, that God has a purpose for us. There was a woman in one of my churches that, um, through a stroke and, and some medical issues, was bedridden in a nursing home for over a decade of her life. And she, stro- she wrestled with why, what was her purpose now in life as, uh, as she laid in this bed. But Miss Burness prayed for people. And she took even that hard into her life 
And she prayed for people. And she encouraged the nurses that cared for her. And she used that time where you might say, that person doesn't have a purpose anymore. She still had a purpose. Right? So you're not too young. You're not too old to be used by God. If you're willing to be used by God and you open yourself to it, I believe that he will use you. So dear friends, I hope this sits heavy with you today. And I hope you're pondering this. What is, what is this plan that God has for me? Maybe God is calling you to enter some sort of specialized, distinct Christian ministry. But probably, more likely, he's calling you to stay exactly where you are and serve him there. To to take boldness and courage and step out in some way within your church or in your community. How I've been thinking about this. I've, I've been seeing this need and I've been trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do with that. This could be God speaking to you with that. So if you will open yourself for God to speak to you, he will. And your loved ones and your friends and sometimes even strangers will point these things out to you if you will be open to hear God speak. So I pray today that you would be able to discern that. No, you have a plan and a purpose. Your life is not meaningless. It's not meant to just trudge along through your days. God has a plan for you. So I pray that you will join the team and take up the role that God has given to you that his kingdom could prevail. Let's pray. Oh, Lord God, thank you for how you have called us, that we have a purpose, that we have a plan, that you have created this for us. Not that we would be like everybody else, but that we could be unique to what you have drawn us to. So God, for those today that are sitting with that, wrestling with that, struggling with that, may they answer you today. May they not push it off any longer, but respond. And all the ways that you're calling us to serve, O oh God, help us to be faithful. For it's in Christ we ask and we pray. Amen. This morning as we close with our last song, uh, you know, again, the altar is always a space for you to come and kneel and pray. But I hope you'll take a step forward in following and being faithful to God. That you will come and pray and invite God to show you the plan for your life. And that you might be able to respond obediently. Let's stand as we sing. Let's sing together hymn number 593, Here I Am, Lord.
are going to have a decorating party right after church. If you're able to stick around, we, we greatly welcome the help. Now you receive this benediction. You, dear friend, are called by God. May he reveal his plans and his purposes to you, and may you have the courage to be faithful. Go in his peace. Amen. Thank you.